welcome to Zephyr Travels and this week we're going to do a campground 411 on the San Diego KOA. This is a KOA resort and we want to share with you our experience staying here. We actually ended up staying here for over six weeks due to an illness that Diane had that she had to be hospitalized in the San Diego area. So it was a lot of, it was an extended stay that we weren't expecting. And this campground was wonderful because they worked with us to make sure that we had a place to stay knowing that we were dealing with unusual circumstances and we needed to be able to extend our stay uh, literally week by week. We needed, we needed this because we had a lot of medical stuff that I will tell you about in a separate video. But in this video I really want to concentrate on showing you the campground and sharing with you what I liked and disliked about it. And to be honest with you, there's not going to be a lot of dislikes. There may be a couple, but for the most part this has been a really great campground. So let's start the tour. During our stay, this was our campsite that we stayed in for the first three weeks of our visit here at the KOA. We later moved into a monthly site because we were running up to a holiday weekend and the campground was fully booked and they weren't going to be able to allow us to stay on this site at that time. This site cost us $90 per night, which is a little expensive. It's definitely way above our budget but we needed some place to stay and we needed some place that was going to be very flexible because of Diane being in the hospital. So this worked out. So the site is, I don't know if I can show you over my shoulder. There you go. The site is kind of compact. The Airstream just fit here, but they do have parking area in front of the campsite that you can park the truck in. So that worked out well. This campsite doesn't hit, isn't fully paved like a lot of the sites, unfortunately. So the picnic table is on the dirt and grass area. Um, we used our camp rug to kind of protect the uh, dogs from getting too dirty. But it, was, it worked out very well for us. Like many KOAs, this campground does have deluxe sites. And this is an example of one where you get a fire pit, a grill, some Adirondack chairs, a picnic table, and an umbrella. As you can see, they have quite a few of them. These sites will cost you well over $100 per night. By coming here to the dog park, um, we made a trip here at least a couple times a day except for on weekends because it would get a little crowded and one of the things that we're kind of particular about is we really don't like Monty and Zephyr to socialize with other dogs at the dog park, mostly because Monty just doesn't always know how to play with another dog and we don't want to have an issue. We're trying to be a good owner in that regard. <laughs> Of course, this being a KOA resort, you know they're going to have a spectacular pool. So I want to show you that now. It's got what I think is really kind of cool. It has a very shallow end that starts at zero and goes to three feet, where smaller kids can just walk into the pool without having to use a ladder or climb over the edge. And then they've got two other distinct areas, or three really almost distinct areas that you can swim in that's all connected to this pool. And then there are two hot tubs. So each hot tub is set up for about eight people. So you can have one that's over here on the side that's very private, or you can have one more out in the open. So maybe your kids are in the pool and you mom and dad want to hang out in the hot tub. I think that's pretty cool. There is also a row of cabanas that can be reserved. So you could have a little bit of more of a private area instead of just sitting out on one of these uh, lounge chairs, which there are plenty of on both sides of the pool, plus tables and chairs. It's really a nice setup. This KOA has the jumping pillows for kids. And on a weekend, this is the place to find your kids. This, these two pillows here are absolutely packed with children. So it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Like most KOAs, 
You have your traditional camping cabins that you can rent. You need to bring all your supplies here, including bedding, for the camping cabins. They do have camper kitchens. These are like a community kitchen that can be used by the people in the camping cabins. You get grills, sinks, stoves, everything you need to kind of prepare a meal. A step up from the camping cabins are these yurts, which are basically a tent, but you do get linens included in one of these, so you don't need to bring as much when you come. The KOA does have comfort stations available. These are individual bathrooms that include showers and toilets and everything. This is great for the camping cabins which and the yurts which don't have their own bathrooms in them. For those of you who are looking for something a little bit more like a tiny home, they do offer these tiny homes that are fully equipped with kitchens and bedrooms and everything and can sleep a large family. One of the surprising things to me, and I guess I just never connected it, you know, Diane and I don't travel with kids, we're older adults, but KOAs are geared for families and you really get to see that here on the weekends where a lot of families come in, rent bikes and kids, there's a ton of activities here for the kids to do over the weekend. Really adds a lot to their experience. Right here is the laundry area and this laundry area is open every day and they have nine washing machines and six dryers which is plenty for the most of the time for getting your laundry done. The cost of the laundry is very reasonable. It's about $1.75 for wash and works out to be about a dollar and a quarter to dry. So I, that's very reasonable, much cheaper than most uh, campgrounds or laundromats that we've been to. And the machines work excellently. I wanna share with you some thoughts on staying here at this KOA. Like I said, they were absolutely wonderful. The, the management here was very accommodating for our needs while we were here. Um, I will say that for me personally, I was never a real KOA type person and I never really got it, I guess. And it's because I'm not really the demographic for a KOA. The, the, the average KOA person or family is literally that, a family. And you've got kids and this is a, just a great place to come for a weekend with your kids. The weekends I was here, this place was full. People were having birthday parties. The kids were running around having a blast. And, and it just makes sense. This is exactly what I'd want to do if I had kids in you know, that age. But for an older adult, it, we're really not the demographic for this as much. It's a nice place to stay. Um, the campsites are really nice. There's some really nice deluxe campsites that you can rent here. And so that makes sense. And I think for a, you know, a weekend or a week or something, this works out well. But in our case, this time, it worked out very good for us because we needed flexibility in, in what we were staying or where we were staying. And this campground offered that for us. We were able to stay here for up to six weeks, which brings me to probably my only downside to this campground, and that is the cost. This is a KOA resort. The nightly rate is very expensive. I was spending $90 a night, and that was the cheapest site I could get on the app. I later was able to move into a monthly site, which was a little less than $50 per night, so it did save us quite a bit, but I had to pay for a whole month. The other downside to this campground, and I'm not sure if you can be able to hear it in the background, there is an expressway, and it's elevated right off to the north of the campground. And so you tend to hear a lot of noise from that. It's, it is a little bit loud here, but you tend to get used to it and you probably really don't notice it in the, your RV as much. I don't hear it that much. And the traffic does drop off quite a bit during the night, so I don't hear it overnight at all. But that's probably my two complaints to this campground is the cost, it can be expensive to stay here, and the noise from the expressway. We've had a wonderful time here, and I would recommend if you're looking for something, in the San Diego area, that this would be a good choice. It's right in Chela Vista, so it's easy to get to. I will put the details of the campground in the description. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, 
please like it, share it with your friends, and if you're not a subscriber to our channel, please consider subscribing. We do campground reviews like this. We also share our adventures and places we visit. So hopefully you will find our channel interesting and would love to follow along in our journey. So until the next time, we will see you down the road. Bye everybody.